to have some juice. <laughs> hey, y'all. Hello, y'all. Hello. 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 Uh, I'm going to start out with meditation today. And one of my favorite lessons is in the Course in Miracles. Now, I'd like you to just breathe during this. Open your minds. Realize you don't have to believe it. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to welcome it. Some of it's going to be hard to believe. Some of it's going to be quite startling. But if you use it, it will work for you if you use it. And this lesson right here is uh, one that I'd like for you to just breathe on. Let your mind go anywhere it wants to go. It doesn't matter. Ah. And ask yourself, what would it take for everything that I would love in my life to show up in ways beyond my wildest imagination through the Holy Spirit? How can I have everything that I've always wanted show up in my life in ways beyond my wildest imagination through spirit? How can I have everything that I've wanted show up in my life in ways beyond my wildest imagination through the Holy Spirit? How can I have everything I've ever wanted show up in my life in ways beyond my wildest imagination through the Holy Spirit? How can I have everything that I've ever desired in my heart to show up in my life in ways beyond my wildest imagination through the infinite divine mind? How can I have everything that I've always wanted in my heart to show up in my life in ways beyond my wildest imagination through the Holy Spirit? What would it take for all of the peace that I've ever wanted in my life to show up in ways beyond my wildest imagination through the Holy Spirit? How can I have everything I've ever desired in my life show up in ways beyond my wildest imagination through the Holy Spirit? How can I have everything that I've always wanted in my heart to show up in my life in ways beyond my wildest imagination through the Holy Spirit? How can I have everything I've always wanted in my life show up in ways beyond my wildest imagination through the Holy Spirit? How can I have everything I've ever wanted show up in my life in ways beyond my wildest imagination through the Holy Spirit? I am sustained by the love of God. 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 Is the answer to every problem problem that will confront you, every problem that will confront you today, tomorrow, and throughout time. This is the answer to every problem that will confront you every day, tomorrow, and throughout time. In this world, you believe you are sustained by everything but God, your creator, love. Do you know that your faith is placed in the most trivial and insane symbols. Your faith is placed in peels. Your faith is placed, 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 placed. Your faith is placed in money. 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 Your faith is placed in protective clothing. Your, your faith is placed in influence. Your faith is placed in prestige. Your faith is placed in being liked. Your faith is placed in being liked. Your faith is placed in knowing the right people. Your faith is placed in knowing the right people. And an endless list of forms of nothingness that you endow with magical powers. Your faith is placed in an endless list of forms of nothingness that you endow with magical powers to take care of you, with magical powers to take care of you. All these things are your replacements for the love of God. All these things are your replacements for the love of God. All these things are cherished just to ensure that you keep thinking you are just a body. All these things are cherished to make you forget that you are truly spirit. Putting all your faith in peels, money, protective clothing, influence, prestige, being like, knowing the right people, 
These things are just songs of praise to your fear. These things just keep you in fear. Believing that these things are what's taking care of you, that's what keeps you in your ego, which is fear. Do not put your faith in the worthless. Do not put your faith in the worthless. The worthless will not sustain you. Do not put your faith in the worthless. It will not sustain you. Do not put your faith in the worthless. It will not sustain you. Only the love of God will protect you in all circumstances, including the one you are in right now. Only the love of your Creator will protect you in all the circumstances that you're in right now. The love of your Creator for you will lift you out of every trial and raise you high above all perceived dangers of this world. I'll say it again, it's your Creator's love for you that will lift you out of every trial and raise you high above all the perceived dangers of this world into a climate of perfect peace and safety. I say, I ask the Creator to raise us high above all the perceived dangers of this world into a climate of perfect peace and safety. Move us into perfect peace and safety. I want to move into perfect peace and safety. I'm asking for perfect peace and safety. The love of your creator will transport you into a state of mind that nothing can threaten a state of mind that nothing can disturb. You want to go into a state of mind where nothing can intrude upon the eternal calm of a child of God. We want to go into a place where there can be nothing that disturbs the eternal peace of your mind. You want to go into a place where nothing can intrude upon the eternal peace of your mind. Say to yourself, I want eternal peace in my mind. I'm willing to have eternal peace in my mind. I am willing to have eternal peace in my mind. I am willing to have eternal peace, eternal peace in my mind. So don't, don't put your faith in pills, money, protective clothing, influence, prestige, being like, and knowing the right people. That, 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 that will fail you. You already know that it fails you. You already know you can't depend on pills, money, protective clothing, influence, prestige, being liked, and knowing the right people. You already know it fails you. You already know you can't depend on that all the time. Put all your faith in the love of God within you. Put all your faith in the love of your creator within you. Put all your faith in the love of your creator within you. I said within you. The love of your creator is within you. It's inside you. It's within you. It's inside you. And how can you tell what the love of your creator is? The love of your creator is eternal. The love of your creator never changes. The love of your creator never fails. The love of God is eternal. The love from God is changeless and it forever unfailing. And you know that's not true of any kind of human love. You know human love is not that way. You know you can't depend on human love all the time. And you know human love changes. And you know human love is based on expectations and scripts. You already know that. You already know that. So putting all your faith in the love of God within you, this is the answer to whatever confronts you today. That means God's love for you. I'm not talking about your love for God. I'm not talking about your love for the Creator. I'm not talking about your love for the Creator. I'm not talking about your love for the Creator. It's not your love for your Creator within that's going to take care of you. It's not your love for the Creator within you that's going to take care of you. It is the love of your Creator for you that's going to take care of you. It's the love of the universe for you that's going to take care of you. You know your love is not changeless. You know your love is not eternal. You know your love changes from day to day, moment to moment, situation to situation, if you be honest with yourself. So it's not like the Creator has an ego that needs your love. But the truth is, you are going to be sustained by the love of your Creator. This is the answer to whatever confronts you today. Through the love of God within you, you can resolve all seeming difficulties without effort and ensure confidence. Tell yourself this often today. Tell yourself, 
through the love of God within me, I can resolve all seeming difficulties without effort and in sure confidence through the love of God within us. We can resolve all seeming difficulties without effort and sure confidence. I'm going to say that a few times for us. Through the love of God within us, we can resolve all seeming difficulties without effort and ensure confidence. I can resolve all seeming difficulties without effort and ensure confidence through the love of God within me. Through the love of God within me, I can resolve all seeming difficulties without effort and ensure confidence. Through the love of God within me, I can resolve all difficulties without effort and ensure confidence. Through the love of God within me, I can resolve all seeming difficulties without effort and ensure confidence. Through the love of God within me, through the love of God within me, I can resolve all seeming difficulties without effort and ensure confidence. I can resolve all seeming difficulties without effort and ensure confidence. Through the love of God within me, 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 I can resolve. I can resolve. All seeming difficulties without effort and ensure confidence. Through the love of God within me, 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 I can resolve all seeming difficulties without effort and ensure confidence. Tell yourself this often today. 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 It's a declaration of release from belief in idols. It's a declaration of release from belief in fear. It's a declaration of belief in your ego. It's a declaration of belief in something greater than yourself. It's a declaration of release of something greater than yourself. It's a declaration of release of something greater than yourself. It is an acknowledgement of the truth about yourself. It's an acknowledgement of the truth about yourself. Let the, let the, let the idea of today sink deep. Sink deep into your consciousness. Let the idea for today sink deep, 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 deep into your consciousness. Repeat it. Think about it. Let related thoughts come to help you to recognize its truth. Allow peace, to, allow peace, allow peace to flow over you like a blanket of protection in journey. I allow peace to flow over me like a blanket of protection and surety. I allow peace to flow over me like a blanket of protection and surety. I allow peace to flow over me like a blanket of protection and surety. I allow peace to flow over me like a blanket of protection, like a blanket of protection, like a blanket of protection and a blanket of protection and surety. Let no idle and foolish thoughts enter to disturb your mind. Let no idle and foolish thoughts enter to disturb your mind. Let no idle and foolish thoughts enter to disturb your mind. Let no idle and foolish thoughts enter to disturb your mind. Let no idle and foolish thoughts enter to disturb your mind. Let no idle and foolish thoughts enter to disturb. Tell yourself, I let no idle. I let no idle and foolish thoughts enter to disturb my mind. I let no idle and foolish thoughts enter to disturb my mind. I let no idle and foolish thoughts enter to disturb my mind. I let no idle and foolish thoughts to enter and disturb my holy mind. My innocent mind. I have an 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 inn
innocent mind, I have an innocent mind, I have an innocent mind, I have an innocent heart, I have an innocent heart, I have an innocent heart, I have an innocent heart. That's the kingdom of heaven, to feel that you have an innocent heart and an innocent mind. That's the kingdom of heaven. That's the resting place where your creator placed you forever. I am sustained by the love of God. 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 should a teacher of God, how should a demonstrator of God, how should they spend their day? How should you spend your day if you're going to demonstrate something besides bull stuff? How should you spend your day if you're going to do something other than how everybody else does it, which is to run around aimlessly hoping that they can find something outside of themselves that's going to take care of them. Anybody familiar with that? Those who don't mind talking to me, talk to me today. Those who want to be quiet, be quiet. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Okay, but those who feel like responding, I appreciate it. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. It's so funny. It's like every time we have a class where everybody kicks it up and they're really loud and party like they did last week, the next week is either one third of people and then everybody's. <laughs> so quiet, it's so funny. Yeah. It's so funny. It's, I've seen it for 30 years. It's like it's, 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 it's just like that. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah. Every single time. Mm -hmm. I create that, you know. Yeah. I'm the creator of my experience. There's not anything that happens in my experience that I don't create. That's why I can predict it because I'm the one that's doing it. You see what I'm saying? If yeah. you're the one creating it, then you know your patterns. And if you know you're creating it, then it happens regardless of the people involved because it's not like it's the same people doing the same thing. It's different people doing the same thing. So who's the one constant in that? The one constant is me. So everything that's happening is exactly what I'm requesting, exactly what I'm requesting. Everything that's happening to you in your life right now, you're asking for it. Everything that's happening to you in your life right now is exactly as you are creating it. Everything that's mm -hmm. happening to you in your life right now is exactly as you're creating it. Everything that's happening to you in your life right now is exactly as you're creating it. Everything that's happening in your life right now is exactly as you're creating it. Everything that's happening in your life right now is exactly as you're creating it. Everything that's happening in your life right now is exactly as you are creating it. Everything that's happening in your life right now is exactly as you are creating it. Everything that's happening in your life right now is exactly as you are creating it. There's not one single thing that's happening to you right now that you are not creating it. Now, on the count of three, I'd like you to say, shut up, Earl. One, two, three. Shut up, Earl. Put some juice in it. One, two, three. Shut up, Earl. You know there's a part of you that wants to say it if you'll be honest with yourself. So give it up if there's a part of you that wants to say it. I know there's a part of me that wants to say it. One, two, three. Shut up, Earl. Just shut it up. Can it. Can it. All right. Okay, so we're on page 40. There's some loaner books over here that if you want to you want to follow along, it would be helpful if you think you're a Course in Miracles student to maybe look at the Course in Miracles book sometime. It's a wild concept, but I'm going to put it out there to the group. All right. Okay, so the first thing to realize is that everything that's happening in your experience right now, you're totally innocent, but you're an infinite creator having a human experience, and so everything that's occurring is exactly as you are creating it. 
And as soon as you own that it has nothing to do with anything outside of yourself, it will change. Whatever it is you want to change, every time you say, if something outside of myself changed, then this would be the thing that would make me happy, then you are going opposite to the way universal law works, and you're not allowing yourself to have a breakthrough. A breakthrough does not come from believing that what you are going through has anything to do with economic, social, cultural, racial, gender conditions. If you're an infinite being getting in touch with your power, then you are beginning to recognize that you are the creator of your experience. And the more you say it has anything to do, if you're broke and you're saying it has anything to do with the economy, then you are not living your truth. You're not in touch with your actual power as a spiritual being yet. You're innocent. But that's not the truth. There are people who have had incomes go up 300,000% this year. There are people who experience more material wealth than they ever have in their life this year. And it has nothing to do with the economy at all. Your wealth has nothing to do with your sex, your race, your education, or the economy. <clears throat> According to this, it, it's coming from your consciousness. Your consciousness is your level of perception and your level of attunement to your own divine plan and your own inner guidance. So this section is about how should you spend your day if you're trying to get in touch with your higher self and live from a higher place. I did the first two paragraphs. I'm going to start off with number three. Number three, it says, is at the beginning, it's wise to think in terms of time. This is by no means the ultimate criterion, but at the outset, it's probably the simplest to observe. The saving of time is essential. It is an essential early emphasis, although saving time remains important. Throughout the learning process, saving time becomes less and less emphasized. At the outset, at the beginning, we can safely say that time devoted to starting the day right saves time. Time devoted to starting the day correctly saves time. Time devoted to starting the day right is what saves time. Mm. Like if, you, if you're traveling somewhere and you make the right turn at the intersection, does it not save you time? Yes. Right. So if you do it right, it saves you time. So the most time-saving thing a person can do is to what? Do it right the first time. <laughs> All right, then, you go, then Spirit goes on to tell us that um, how much time should be spent <laughs> starting the day right. He says, well, that must depend on you, the teacher of love itself. I'm going to use love and fear. Love is God, fear is the ego. So the Court says that depends on you. How much time you spend depends on you. I don't spend any less than two or three hours a day focusing on my spiritual path and my connection with Source. I realized a long time ago, one time when I was hanging off a pole as a telephone man back in my other life, back in the mm -hmm. 70s, and I was freezing my can off trying to fix the phone <laughs> after climbing up a pole with the little spikes on, beating ice off the pole, where the ladies downstairs, I mean, down at the bottom of the pole, upset and angry at me because her phone had been out, who I, which I found out about 15 minutes before I got there because we had dispatched. That if I, could, if I could spend six hours a week freezing my butt off, listening to somebody going off, that I could certainly spend my life doing what I wanted to do. Yes. That I made a decision. She saved my life. I blessed her many, many days. But times because she was the one that made me, helped made me get that. You know what? I'm not going to spend my life yeah. freezing, your ass off. freezing my butt off, not doing what I really want to do every day just so I can make it. You know what I'm saying? So, so the course, so the course says, so, so if I, so I found out if I could spend 60 hours a week doing something I didn't really want to do, I could definitely spend two or three hours a day focusing on my spiritual path and my spiritual truth and my relationship with God, which would in turn allow me to be taken care of and directed toward the people, places, and situations that would be best for me. And that's exactly what it's been for the last 25 years that I've been doing this. So the time that you spend working on your spiritual path and self-realization is a thousand times more important than the stuff that we tell ourselves that needs to be taken care of before we can spend the time wow. doing that. You know, I, I realized my spiritual path was not something I was supposed to do after everything else was taken care of, mm -hmm. which is usually the way that I used to do it before. It was like when I take care of everything else, then if I have a few quiet moments, maybe I'll spend a few minutes before I go to bed focusing on the truth. So I had to do what? I had to start the day right. Starting the day right was getting out of bed, focusing on the truth at the very beginning because the day is going to end up the way I started it out. It's going to be a reflection of my consciousness. Then the Course says, uh, you can't call yourself a true teacher of God with the Course of Miracles. You can't claim that title until you've least gone through the workbook since we're trying to learn within the framework of the Course. 
After completion of the more structured practice periods which this workbook contains, individual need becomes a chief consideration. So first you do the 365 lessons, one for each day of the year of the workbook, and then after that you do whatever you need to do. Your own individual need becomes the chief consideration. So the, this class is very much geared toward and open to people who are coming in this class that, that are not studying the Course in Miracles. I'm, I'm glad to see anybody that comes to this class. Those of you who are start, studying the Course in Miracles, you need to do the workbook. The workbook is very important. It's the practical application of the ideas that you're studying. And if you're not happy, if you're not finding that your peace is increasing, it simply means you're not living by the ideas, you're thinking the ideas. If you think the ideas, then you're going to go through your day-to-day -day stuff, look back on it, say it was a lesson that you needed to learn some spiritual lesson about, and then you go repeat the same thing again and then go, oh, I look back on it and go, oh, that was a spiritual lesson. And if you're thinking the truth, you'll do it again and you'll look back and go, oh, that was another spiritual lesson. So the Course says people that, basically people who are thinking it and not living it are going through the same things that everybody else is going through, only they're saying to themselves, I created it and uh, there was a spiritual lesson in it. So, and people who are living by the truth are not having the same things come up over and over again to say that about. Got the difference between the two? If I'm thinking the truth, then I'm going through the same stuff everybody else is, but then on the back end, I'm looking at it and saying the spiritual stuff you should say about it. I created it. Um, uh, there was a lesson for me to learn in that. Uh, I'm just accepting my lot pretty much as it is, and I'm pretty, feeling pretty peaceful, but I'm dealing with the lessons that I've been dealing with all the time. That's what people say who are thinking the truth. People who are living by the truth are not having those things come up the way that they were coming up before. Because when you live by the truth, those obstacles and blocks go away. See the difference between the two? Everybody clear on that? Okay, it's okay to think the truth, but if you're thinking the truth, then you're just repeating your patterns, but you're looking at it in a more peaceful way. If you're living the truth, your pattern is gone. It's not there. You're not having the bum relationships that you're trying to look at as a spiritual purpose, from a spiritual purpose. You're not, you don't have the career, the job you're going to that you hate every day, but you're trying to give yourself peace about. It. You see, if you're living the truth, you are doing fulfilling things. Your happiness is your function. Your function and your happiness are the same thing, and you're not dealing with your old patterns anymore. If you're living the truth, if you're reading it, thinking it, philosophizing about it, then you're still going through the same stuff everybody else goes through, but you have a more peaceful interpretation of it, which is good, but that's not the same as living it. Everybody clear about the difference between those two things? So based on those two things, you know which one you're doing. And, you, and, and you're innocent, no matter which one you're doing. Okay? Then the course then goes on to say, this course is always practical. So it may not be that a teacher of love is in a situation that fosters quiet thought when he wakes up. Uh, if this is so, when you wake up, you're not in this place where you can do a meditation or focus in on the truth. He says you need to remember that you're going to choose to spend time with God as soon as possible. You're going to choose to spend time with the truth as soon as possible, and then do it. I can't, I can't get, a, I can't do it this morning. Just when I wake up, but as soon as I can, I'm going to take a moment to spend time with God. I'm going to take a moment to spend time with truth. I'm going to take a moment to focus in on the truth. Duration is not the major concern. It's not about how long you do it. It's not about how long you spend focusing on the truth. What's important is to recognize that one could sit still for an hour with their eyes closed and accomplish nothing. That there are probably some people sitting here with their eyes closed and not accomplishing nothing. <laughs> because they're asleep. And then there could be some people here with their eyes closed just focusing in on what's being said. You can sit still for an hour and accomplish nothing. So how long you do it is not the major concern. The Course says one can easily give the truth of God only an instant. And in that instant, join with the truth of God completely. You could take one instant and join with spirit completely, and you could sit for an hour and accomplish nothing. So it's not how long you do it. The Course then tells us perhaps the one generalization that can be made is this. This is the process. You ready for the process? Yes. Okay, the process is I video all of my classes and put them on the internet so that we can, so that you would have an opportunity to listen to them over and over and over and over and over again. Because when you leave here, it's a good chance you won't hear what I've said on the news, nor <laughs> in the newspaper, nor <laughs> in the conversations that regular people are having with you. So if you really want to see the pattern go, if you really want to see the block leave, then repetition is how you do it. We learn how to think incorrectly through repetition, 
we're going to learn how to think correctly through repetition. That's why I don't spend a lot of time in my classes analyzing these ideas, but it's more about can I remember, remember what? That I need to start the day right. Can I remember what? That I am sustained by the love of God. Can I remember what? That peels money, protective clothing, and all that stuff is not going to be what takes care of me. I need to remember what? That as soon as I can, I need to spend some time focused on my truth and on my creator. I need to remember what? That it doesn't matter how long I do it. I could just take a second while I'm standing in the grocery line and join with the truth in just an instant. I need to remember that I'm not alone. I need to remember that I'm supported. I need to remember that I'm creating my reality. I need to remember that I'm innocent. It's about remembering is what I'm learning. It's not about analyzing it. It's about remembering that you're beautiful. It's about remembering that you're powerful. It's about remembering that you're not alone. It's about remembering that you have help. It's about remembering that you have guidance. It's about remembering you're not a victim of the world you see. So if you walk out of here today and you say the reason why you're going through anything is society, the environment, or the circumstances, you're using the old, the old thought system and you won't, probably won't see a change in the situation you're trying to change. Why? Because if you believe that it's something outside yourself that needs to change before you can be happy, and then something outside of yourself changed, it would be further convincing you that the answer was outside yourself and not inside yourself. I'll say it again. That's a, that's a bigger Earl. You know this class is for Earl. Y'all know this class is for Earl. Yes. Okay. I just want to be clear. Y'all know what the class is for, right? Okay. And, and you all are joining me because some part of you wants to be reminded of the same thing. But yeah, I do these classes yeah. so I can stay sane because I have a nut inside of me that's highly crazy. There's a part of me that hates me, criticizes me, judges me, never wants me to be happy, always telling me something I need to be on the lookout for, just always has scripts. It's just a part of me that feels depressed, angry, guilty, uh, gets sick, wants to attack, wants to blame. There is a part of my mind that does those things, and I want to confess to you all today that that's exact, that I have that in my mind. I know you don't have that in your mind, but I have that in my mind, and I want to tell the truth about it so it can go away. It goes away when I admit to it. It doesn't go away when I pretend it's not there. So the course then goes on to tell us that as soon as possible, after you wake up, take your quiet time. As soon as you get up, take your quiet time. And then it says, how long should you do it? Isn't that a great question? How long should I take my quiet time? How long should I meditate? How long should I study? Great question. The course is about to answer it. This is what you do. You, you meditate, you're studying, you continue for one or two minutes after you find it difficult. Yeah. How long should you do it? One or two minutes after you begin to find So let's say I'm sitting up here meditating. Okay, my, my own goes, mm, 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 And so how long should I do that? I should do that until it becomes difficult for me to do it for two minutes. Then what do you do? Then you keep on trying for one or two minutes. After it becomes difficult, you may find that if you keep going for one or two minutes after it becomes difficult, the difficulty may diminish and drop away. In other words, how many times have you been like, trying to watch TV and you felt really sleepy and you passed out but you didn't go to bed and you made yourself come back around and you kind of started watching again before you knew it you was up at 3 o'clock in the morning. In other words, there was the, there was the, there was the minute that you were kind of tired and sleepy but you went past it and then you ended up staying up really, really late. Like some people will say around 10, 11 o'clock at night then I get really, really sleepy but if I go past 10, 11 o'clock, if I can do it, then I find myself being up the rest of the night. So that's the same kind of principle. If you find it difficult to meditate or to focus in on the truth, try keep doing it for a couple of more minutes and if the difficulty does not diminish, then that's the time to stop. You may find after the two minutes of difficulty that you feel energized again and you want to keep going. That's how long you meditate. The Course in Miracles is the easiest, simplest path that I have ever read and has given me more results than any path I've ever studied in almost 40 years of studying this stuff. I got into this stuff when I was 23 years old. And, all, and, I, and every single discipline almost that I've ever studied has always required of me more than the Course in Miracles required. 
And I notice that people are willing to do disciplines that require more than the Course of Miracles is asking, much more than they're willing to do what the Course of Miracles asks. Because we don't realize that ease and simplicity destroys the ego and fear. And when you allow yourself to have ease and simplicity, it gets rid of your fear, it gets rid of your ego, and it gets rid of your blocks. If you can keep things complicated, then it keeps the ego going. Complication is of the ego, and ease is of spirit. So the part of us that believes that we should suffer loves to make everything complicated, and if it doesn't make it complicated, it tries to take us into unconsciousness. So that's his two greatest gifts, unconsciousness and complexity. Okay, any questions about anything I've shared so far? Any comments that you'd like to make about anything? If I can clarify anything, that's what I'm here for, because this is not hard, it's just different. Everybody's totally clear. Who can tell me in their own words right quick what they're supposed to do in the morning to have a cool day? Start the day right. Okay, how do you start the day right, right there, Harlan? Sit and be quiet. How long should you sit and be quiet? At least two minutes. At least two minutes. Because in the end, we're talking about at least two minutes. And to see if it's harder than that. This is rough stuff. Some people tell me they don't have time. <laughs> the, yes. the first exercise in the Course of Miracles takes one minute, and I have had so many people tell me they didn't have time to do their work for blessing. I'm going to ask you, that's a, well, you're the busiest person on earth. <laughs> if you don't have a minute out of a day, that's really that's, unbelievable. That's too busy. Yeah, that's too busy. You might want to, you might, you might want to do something about that level of business. If you can, if you, if you, can't, if you don't have a minute, you a busy son of a gun. All right. So the Course says, you know what it is? It says this is a matter of motivation. <laughs> that it's all a matter of motivation. You know what I'm saying? Like I was thinking about you today, Shannon, you know, how you're getting ready to go. Where are you getting ready to go? Uh, Honduras. To Honduras, you know. Get ready to go to Honduras to learn, to do your thing, and to learn some Spanish, and then plant yourself in these situations where you can learn how to speak the language and all this kind of stuff. Why is she going? Because she's motivated. <laughs> it's going to help her achieve a goal that she set for herself. <laughs> That's what I found out. People always do what they want to do, no matter what it is. That's what I've always noticed, that when people tell me that they, they don't have time, it's just that you're not motivated in most cases. Mm -hmm. If it's what you really want to do, you make time for it. Mm -hmm. I make sure I party. I think that <laughs> partying is an essential part of the creation of my joy and prosperity and yeah. substance in this world. Yeah. And it has been very practical for me to put myself in situations where I'm joining in joy and happiness and I make sure I do it because if I don't, the ego in me would love to keep me making time for everything I don't like and never making any time for anything I do like. It, it, my ego keeps me making time for people sometimes that are challenging because i got to work on my relationships with them and then don't make sure I spend the time with the people that are loving that I have a really beautiful relationship with. I was noticing that my ego loves to keep me fixing something all the time yep. rather than enjoying myself at all. That's a reflection of guilt. Okay. Anybody else care to say, have a question or comment about anything that I've said so far? Oh, you hear about clear. If I was to ask anybody in this room, mm -hmm. you could tell me completely what you're doing to, to have to start the day off right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seems to me my ego will jump in uh -huh. right, right there. When? When I wake up. <laughs> right, it wakes up with you. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it wakes you up. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Actually, it's your ego that wakes you up a lot of times, right? Okay, so let's admit, we, we got an ego, okay, we got an ego, we got a part of us that doesn't know that we're these beautiful, fantastic beings that we are. Okay, that, okay, so we do. What do we do with it? What do we do with it is we give ourselves a new perception of it. What's a new perception of it? How do I get to that new perception? Well, the way to, that I get to that new perception is I save time by starting the day right, by focusing in on the truth in the morning for as long as I can until it becomes difficult for two minutes and if the difficulty doesn't go away then I keep on doing it. If the difficulty, the difficulty goes away, I keep doing it. If the difficulty does not go away, then I stop. Mm -hmm. That's all we've been asked to do, to be sustained by the love of God. That's all you've been asked to do to have another experience of everything that's happening in your life. All right? Okay. All right. Okay, so what should I do at night after I had a hellacious day? 
or not. Okay, it says, but the same procedure should be followed at night. Perhaps a quiet time should be early, fairly early in the evening. It says, if it's not feasible for you to take the quiet time just before going to sleep, do it in the evening. If it's not feasible for you to do it before you go to sleep, do it in the evening. If it's not feasible for you to do it in the morning, do it in the evening. Guess what? It's not wise to lie down for your quiet time. I wonder why. Why would it be wise to lie down for my quiet focus on the truth? Why wouldn't it be wise to lie down? Who knows why it wouldn't be wise to lie down? Who can tell me? What's going to happen, Josh? You might fall asleep. You might fall asleep. That's right. You might fall asleep. Um, I love to meditate lying down. That's my favorite way to do it, as you probably noticed. Um, I go into a deep slumber. <laughs> and sometimes in that deep slumber, I don't even know I'm asleep. And I can't tell you how many times come back told me I've been asleep and I was never aware of it because I was completely thinking the whole time I was asleep. Oh, it's really weird. Yeah. You get in touch with this part of you that's the witness, and it never sleeps. And so somebody said, well, you were asleep. And then in my mind, I wasn't asleep at all because I was con concentrating on the truth because there's a witness self, and then there's the self that's actually in the game. There's the you that's a spectator in the stand, and then there's the you out there on the football field getting clobbered by 20 people who just tackled you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> wow. And then there's the you that makes the touchdown. Hmm. You're the players. You're all the players in the game. They're all you. So the Course in Miracles then goes on to tell us that um, that that uh, that if you should do it in the evening, if you can't do it in the evening, when should you do it? When should you do it? If you can't do it in the evening, when should you do it? If you can't do it in the evening, when should you do it? Maybe before going to sleep is a desirable time to spend with the Creator. Why should you do that? He says because it sets your mind into a pattern of rest. What's a pattern of rest? A pattern of rest is when your mind is oriented away from fear. That's a pattern of rest. It's when your mind is oriented away from fear. If it's expedient to spend this time earlier, at least be sure that you don't forget a brief period, don't forget a brief period, don't forget a brief period, and not more than a moment will do. Don't forget a brief period, uh, not more than a moment will do, in which you just close your eyes and think about God, close your eyes and think about love, close your eyes and think about the truth, close your eyes and think about the truth, close your eyes. Here's a good truth thought to think about. Close your eyes and think, I am entitled to miracles. I am entitled to miracles. I am entitled to miracles. They have nothing to do with me earning them. They have nothing to do with how good I am. I'm entitled to them as a child of love. I'm entitled to miracles. I'm entitled to abundance. I'm entitled to love. I'm entitled to it. I'm entitled to it. It's not something I earn. It's something that I'm entitled to. So take a moment and think of love. Thank you. Take a moment and think of God. Close your eyes and think of love. Close your eyes. Think of God. Close your eyes. Think of your joy. Close your eyes. Think that you're not alone. There is one thought in particular that should be remembered throughout the day. What is that thought? It's a thought of pure joy. It's a thought of peace. It's a thought of limitless release. I think a thought of limitless release. I think a thought of limitless release. I think a thought of limitless release. And when I say it over and over again, anybody that wants to say it in their mind or wants to say it out loud, don't hesitate to do it because repetition is how you change your consciousness. It's not through analyzation, it's through repetition. I think a thought of limitless release. 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 It's a limitless release because everything is freed within that thought. You think you made a place of safety for yourself. You think you made a power that can save you from all the frightening things that you see in your dream. It's not so. Your safety doesn't lie in your plans. Your safety doesn't lie in your plans. Your safety doesn't lie in your plans. My safety doesn't lie in my plans. Say yourself, my safety doesn't lie in my plans. My safety doesn't lie in my plans. My safety doesn't lie in 
mind. So you know what you're doing is you're just merely giving up the illusion of protecting your illusions. You're giving up the illusion of protecting your illusions. And it's your own illusions, your own false ideas that you fear. And only your own false ideas in your mind that's making you afraid. How foolish to be so afraid of nothing. He says, so how foolish to be so afraid of nothing. Nothing at all. Your defenses will not work. Your ego plans that come from fear will not work. But you are not in danger. You are not in danger. You are not in danger. I am 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 not in danger. You have no need of your defenses and plans. Recognize that and they will disappear. And only then will you accept your real protection. It's only when I recognize that all of this defense, this planning, this fear that I'm going through, I'm just going through it because I believe I'm on my own. The Course of Miracles says whenever you feel fear, it just means you're dependent on your own strength, separate from the Creator in you. If you're afraid right now, it just means you're dependent on your own strength. You're dependent on your own wits. You believe you're here by yourself trying to do it on your own. Fear comes from believing that you're doing it on your own. The fear is coming from the belief that I'm doing it on my own. So it's time for you to accept your real protection. So let your higher self know you're willing to get out of the way now. Let your higher self know that you are willing to get out of the way now by doing a symbolic act. And here's the symbolic act. The symbolic act would be just for you to tell yourself this. I accept my real protection. I accept my real protection. Say it again. I accept my real protection. I accept my real protection. This, this is very symbolic. I accept my real protection. Woo! I accept my real protection. Protection. I accept my real 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 protection. The truth is 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 my real protection. Love is my real protection. Love is my real protection. Love is my real protection. I'm going to use my kingdom condoms. And that is God. That is truth. That is love. That is what you are. That is only what you are. Would you acknowledge yourself for hearing this class? For reminding yourself Allowing yourself to be reminded. That's what this is about. It's about allowing yourself to be reminded. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank, you Thank you, God. We're going to do the financial expression okay. of appreciation offering. And I appreciate you. I'm a full time teacher of this stuff. And I appreciate your generosity. I appreciate you giving to yourself. We appreciate you, Brad. I appreciate you too. Thank you, buddy. You, you are welcome. Hey, you are a blessing in my life. You all are such a blessing in my life. And I want to be a blessing in yours. 
Those of you on the internet, as well as those in the class, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one clarity sessions. Go to my website, it explains them, and it also takes uh, advantage of my knowledge of astrology and numerology, which does not conflict with the course, and if you talk to them, I'll tell you how. And uh, you don't have a problem that cannot be given another way to look at it that would allow you to be unblocked if you're open to it. And that's what I want to do with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, uh, we got some additional announcements that we'll do at the end of the class uh, so that I don't have to cut the tape off and start it back up. But then I, got, then I have to split it, put, splice it together. I want to do that. So in just a minute, we'll be through in about five more minutes, and we got a couple of more great announcements for you. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to do to complete is a quick review of what we've already uh, covered so that you have some practical steps to take when you leave out of here today. Um, Anybody have any questions about anything that we've said or anything that we've said so far or anything I could clarify? You're kind of clear about what it is you can do right now to allow spirits to come into your experience and take over what it is that's been bothering you for so long. See, that's the thing. If the, the, what we're doing is we're learning how to get out of the way so the spirit can take over right now to let the truth come through so sometimes sometimes to in order to let something come to you you just have to take a minute to let yourself just receive it and i don't mind if you just receive it and let me put the energy out there for you and just breathe that's okay here's your here's the instructions It's important for you to start the day off right. You want to start the day off right. As soon as you get up in the morning, try to take a quiet time to spend with the truth. As soon as you get up in the morning, start the day by focusing on the truth. When you get up in the morning, first thing in the morning, you want to have a quiet time that you focus on your truth. It doesn't have to be the Course in Miracles if you're not into a Course in Miracles, but it needs to be some truth that you are focusing in on. That's the first thing to do in the morning, is to show spirit that you're willing to put spirit first, that you're willing to put God first, that you're willing to put the truth first. It's the first thing that you do in the morning, in the morning. And it doesn't matter how long you spend on the truth in the morning. I say you could spend time, an hour of time, with your eyes closed and accomplish nothing. But you could easily give the truth an instant, give spirit an instant, and join with spirit completely. As soon as you wake up in the morning, don't get focused on the world without giving yourself some truth. Give yourself some truth in the morning. Do it as long as you can until you start feeling a sense of difficulty. And if you feel a sense of difficulty, keep doing it for a moment or two. If you feel difficulty after meditating, continue for at least a moment or two. And if the difficulty moves away, the difficulty goes away. Keep on going. If the difficulty goes away, it may drop away. If it drops away, keep on focusing on the truth. A truth like this, like this. I am entitled to miracles. I am sustained by God. I bless the world because I bless myself. I rest in God. I rest in God. Forgiveness offers Everything I want, I say bless the world because I bless myself. I bless the world because I bless myself. I bless the world because I bless myself. I bless the world because I bless myself. Now, don't lay down and go to sleep unless you know how to do it like I do. And meditate while you're doing it. <laughs> 
But you want to try to do it at night. If you can't do it in the morning, you want to do it in the evening. If you can't do it in the morning, you want to do it in the evening. If you can't do it in the morning, if you can't do it in the evening, in the morning, you want to do it before you go to sleep. Because if you focus on the truth before you go, before you go to sleep, you focus on the truth before you go to sleep, it will orient. Orient your mind away from fear before you go to sleep. Don't forget if you have a moment today, if you have just a brief instant, just a brief instant to think about God. Take a brief instant, any time today, and think about the truth. Take a brief instant, any time today, and think of God. Think a thought of pure joy, a thought of pure peace. You want to think a thought of limitless release. You want to think a thought of joy, and think a thought of peace, and you want to think a thought of limitless release. I think a thought of joy. I think a thought of peace. I think a thought of limitless release. I think a thought of joy. I think a thought of peace. I think a thought of what? Limitless release. I think a thought of joy. I think a thought of peace. I think a thought of limitless release. I think a thought of joy. I think a thought of peace. I think a thought of limitless louder. I think a thought of joy. I think a thought of peace. I think a thought of limitless release. I think a thought of joy. I think a thought of peace. I think a thought of limitless release. What? I think a thought of joy. I think a thought of peace. I think a thought of limitless release. I think a thought. I think a thought of limitless release. I think a thought of joy. I think a thought of peace. I think a thought of limitless release. Appreciate y'all. Thanks for coming to the show today. Allowing yourself to remember with me. Remember, it's about remembering it. Yeah. That's what allowed a miracle to happen, and you deserve nothing at all but juicy, wonderful miracles. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah.